A word from this video sponsor. Got an idea for a circuit, widget, or device that you want to rapid prototype or sell? Check out JLC PCB. They offer their board manufacturing services starting at two bucks for five boards and only take a few days from start to finish. Step one, log into the link in the description. Here you can upload your board files, select options like color, quantity, and even special features uh, for a variety of applications. Step two, complete the order process, and if your boards pass validation checks, then they'll immediately begin manufacture upon payment and shipping selection. Step three, profit. Here you can see they made 50 prototype boards for me in less than three full days. How crazy is that? So make sure to check out JLC PCB, and once again, thanks for making this video possible. Now let's get on with the video. Hey there YouTube, this is SJM4306 back with another project video. And this is my, um, what I'm calling tentatively the easy flip. This is board version 1.0, and I designed this, and these are the electromechanical displays I uh, received from Alpha Zeta, very kindly uh, donated six of them for this project video uh, series, and it's going to be a series, it's not going to be a single video, because there's actually a critical flaw in my design, um, that required me to redesign the board and I've sent them off to order. Uh, so unfortunately, um, this board won't work in the way that I want it to. So I'm gonna wait for a version 2.0 uh, to arrive in the mail before assembling. Basically, as I showed in the assembly, um, there's barely any components to this. There's a uh, PIC 16F886, which is like my go-to controller, because I already have full libraries written for it and everything, and it's all good to go. And um, just five of these H-bridges, and um, these are dual H-bridges. Uh, well, it's, uh, it's two half H-bridges. So basically, each one of these can control one motor bidirectionally. Uh, but I'm not using them to control motors, I'm using them to control the inductors so I can flip these segments on and off. Uh, but um, you might think, okay, there are only five of them, how the heck am I controlling technically 16 segments? And uh, what my idea was, was to uh, multiplex them to have, uh, say, the square pads all wired together and uh, to use relays uh, to select between the two segments. Uh, but as I'll find out pretty soon, 
uh, when I first fired this up, it didn't work exactly as I had hoped. And um, there is a, a critical design flaw, unfortunately. So, so let's take a closer look at um, what the software is doing exactly. So to make it a little bit simple, now I'm only switching one segment on and off. I'm trying to switch segment A of display zero, which is the one on the left here. So this display should be the only one that moves. Now when I power it up, I'm going to put it in the test mode by pressing the button on the back and then turning it on. And I can hear the uh, relay firing. And I'm just going to touch. You can see the exact problem it's having. Now if I, if I hold it vertically, the correct one fires. The other one doesn't quite have enough current. Um, but if I hold it up like this, both of them trigger, even though this one should be the only one triggering. Now, to explain that, we're going to have to go... Let me just turn this off. To explain that, we're going to actually have to go to the schematic, and I'll show you guys exactly what the problem is. And it's a bit of an oopsie. I kind of made a stupid logical mistake that um, means that I'm not able to actually independently control the segments between the two displays. They both want to act in par parallel, basically. Um, so uh, let's take a look at the schematic and hopefully um, I can figure out a way to fix this. Okay, so here's the, uh, the schematic for the version one of the board. And here you can actually see um, I'll use my mouse. Uh, so these two are the actual displays themselves, and I don't show the, um, the internal inductors which represent the coils for each of the segments. But you can see A1, A2 is basically the coil that controls segment A, and then the same for B, C, D, E, F, G, etc., etc. I put in some, not 10K, but just a placeholder resistor here, but I ended up shunning this. This was basically if I needed to limit the current, I could do so for each segment, or each digit rather. But uh, you could see I common uh, the two side basically of each of these displays all together into a bus. And this is kind of where the fault happens. So my idea was uh, each of these commons uh, is controlled via a, a read relay. And uh, that is controlled you know, in turn by the the, the uh, PIC microprocessor over here. But the issue is, say I have, uh, you know, this common turned on for the left-hand display and the right-hand one turned off. Say I put uh, A is 1 and then all the rest are 0. It will definitely turn on A, but you can see now A is also connected to uh, the A of the second display here. So because... B is zero and all, all of these other pins are zero. You basically have an inductor, which is just a fairly low value wire, resistance wire. So it'll actually go through, go through this um, common side. And then there's a current return path through B2 and C2 and D2, E2. Basically all these inductors end up being in parallel and then in series with the, uh, the line that's activated. So here you can see why it was weakly turning on um, A for the second segment, even though I was only telling it to turn on A for the first segment. So in this way, I was kind of hoping that the, um, the, the leakage current um, on the second display would be low enough as not to affect it, uh, but clearly it's an issue. I was actually toggling both of them. The second display was rather weak, though, but... Um, Definitely, uh, this method would not work, um, unfortunately. So I have to decouple uh, these two displays. So my idea is um, basically just brute force it by now. I'm, I'm, I, I thought I would be clever, but clearly I'm not clever enough. So I'm just going to throw uh, either discrete transistors or those H-bridges, but throw one for each segment so I don't have to mess around with... Um, anything more complex in terms of like trying to multiplex them. I know it is possible to, but I would basically need a tri-state um, driver for this bus here um, so that I could essentially disconnect all the other ones uh, so that there is no return path on the unactivated display. So it's rather unfortunate. 
I thought that having this isolation would be enough, but I kind of didn't think that about uh, the fact that these are all just wires essentially in between the segments are just coils of wire. Uh, so yeah, there's going to be leakage current all over the freaking place. <laughs> so unfortunately, that's not going to work. And I have a feeling I'd put uh, these um, these solder pads here, and you would my idea was you would solder them, and it would allow you to select. Um, which what the address of this is so you could either set it in e square prom or you could set it by soldering these links uh, so that would be a quick way of changing it without having to program anything uh, but if i have to drive a lot more segments basically cut this wire here um, then i'm going to need a lot more io so i'm probably going to have to get rid of this feature uh, but i'm going to have to do a lot of rewiring it's a bit of a pain and I've also noticed one thing that I didn't possibly think of. Um, these are h bridge drivers, but they're made for motors. So if you look at the data sheet, uh, you're actually not allowed to, if you try to drive two of the segments high at the same time, um, what will happen is both the outputs will be low anyway, because that would be akin to trying to uh, connect both terminals of the motor to your positive supply, which I guess for I don't know, the manufacturers of the, the dual h bridge chip just decided that under that case, it just wouldn't allow you to do that. So only one of these can be high at a time. Um, so it is annoying. You'd never want to really do that for a motor anyway, um, for driving like an, an RC car motor. Um, so I guess I kind of understand, but the consequence of that is if I wanted to invert, um, so to have the current flow in the opposite direction by putting all, all these high, just selecting one as a low, and then setting this common as a high, that means I actually couldn't do that. So I would have to reset basically at least one of these segments at a time, which is kind of weird. Um, so I don't know if I'm gonna actually stick with these motor drivers. I thought I'd be clever and try to save money since I could buy 50 of these chips for about eight or 10 bucks. Uh, so that would have been awesome, but I think it might actually end up be easier and cheaper just to go with either discrete transistors or like a tri-state chip solution, like a, a, an octal tri-state buffer, um, maybe a serial one. So I'm gonna look at my options, redesign the board and hopefully get something, a, a revision two of the board that'll work. So yeah, anyway, um, sorry that I wasn't able to make this work first go around. I'm actually used to things not working the first time around. So this is one of the things that if you're getting into engineering, be prepared to be disappointed, be prepared to make stupid uh, design decisions and uh, stupid mistakes and for it not to work. But the important thing is not to get overwhelmed with that and uh, to take this as a learning lesson. I'm still learning as well. So anyway, Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video, and then once again, I'd like to thank uh, JLCPCB for providing the boards, and yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.